Hello everyone, this is uh, Black from 17 here, and uh, today, well today is the day, <laughs> well today wasn't the day, but like, you get what I mean. So today we're we'll going over our Amino Draft for Grand Finals for this Grand Festival, as we're up against Doggo. Now, like, there has been like, I think 62 people, 62 people that like joined this tournament, well, it's a, a standard like 64 person tour. There's some few drops and add dishes here and there, but now it just comes down to these two, me and Doggo. So, um, as you can see, um, here are all the teams I've used, all the stuff I've talked about over the, the throughout this, uh, I guess you could say journey. However, we have one more opponent. That is Doggo. Doggo. The doggo. I think that's his amino name, so oh or uh, that's how it go by, so I'll refer to him as doggo, so or just dog. So. Um Dog here has a very strong team, if you ask me. Uh with Bale offense in a sense, so um with uh, featuring mods like Charizard X, Alola Nine Ninetales, Keldeo, with with uh, what Terium Z, not Keldeo, with equipped with the Autolite Terium Z. He also has the option to use it. Ditto, Shuckle, Tissarina, Bronzong, Jolteon, Ambipod. Other three Pokemon we also have, besides Latios, Muk, Magirna, Entei, Zapdos, and Mudsdale, spoilers that may be the team we're using, are also Chestnut, Empoleon, and Licky Licky. So, <laughs> um, so for this game, Let's go over like uh, Doggo's team for a bit. So, oh boy, this thing terrifies me. <laughs> Honestly, this is by far the, the biggest threat on his Doggo's team because Char X is such a dangerous Pokemon, even in Draft League, because with Draft League, you're limited to the amount of checks and counters you have based off your team. And in a Draft Tour, <laughs> when you have less Pokemon, you either counter certain Pokemon very well. Or you just get beaten by them, so yeah. And Char X is one of those Pokemon that I feel like I really have to prepare very like twice as hard because if I don't, then Char X just wins. Like I'm not I'm not kidding. Like Char X has the potential to sweep my entire team, especially the one I brought. So I mean, with stuff like Flare Blitz, uh, not False Wipe or Blast Burn. Flare Blitz, Dragon Claw, Earthquake. Um, he can run Outrage, but I don't think he will run it because I have a Fairy type, one that's actually really good. So, and like, of course, he might run Roost, uh, for recovery, Dragon Dance, Swords Dance, whatever. I'm more scared of Swords Dance than Dragon Dance, but Dragon Dance is just as scary. And also, with given the speed tiers, I think he's he's more likely gonna run Adam in nature because. Yeah, I do have a Pokemon like Zapdos to speed tie with it, but it's Zapdos, so you're likely going to run defensive, so he has the luxury of running out of nature this time, and you could just run full max attack, which is very scary, so, and not only that, just, you can also run Bulky Wisp, which is even more scarier, <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of chuckled there, but... Well, in all seriousness, Char X is by far the biggest threat to the team, so um, probably the one thing standing towards our championship title, so yeah. Then we have another Nolan Ninetales, which is probably the second number, or the number two Mon, or number three, depending on how this goes, so. Um, I think we all know why Nolan Ninetales is really good, but Snow Warning or Reveal just gives your opposing team like immediate setup, immediate on immediate light screen and reflect built in, and you have still have action options like Moonblast, Blizzard, and even Encore to shut down any form of setup. And you could either just run Life Orb or like an uh, Life Orb or Light Clay. I think he's gonna bring Light Clay just to extend the torch of Oroville. probably being a more bulkier Nine Tails, just to ensure that he's able to set up set up screens. As like quickly as possible. He just has to set up mob once, switch out, then set him up again if he needs to. So, 
This mod's gonna be really, really annoying to kill once it gets the overfill boost. I don't think he even needs to run offensive. Like, offense is an option, but I feel like with Bale, it just makes it very difficult to kill Char X. Because that's the thing. Like, he could just run enough bulk. Maybe not this much, but he can even forego some attack. Let's say, like, oh, this is how much he needs just to kill certain mods, then yeah. Just go ham versus my team. Or once he finds a good speed tier and, sh and stuff. Like, this is, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm not optimizing the speed, like, the EV spread for this, but, like, I'm just saying, oh, let's say if he just needs this much speed to outstage, like, let's say Magirna, this much to, uh, to live a hit from, like, the their cannon and whatnot, so, and, and even Vale, so, yeah. So that's why I'm pretty much terrified of Char-X, because with Vale, a bulky Char-X can just really wreck health. So, yeah. Ninetales could be also a threat offensively, and also with Encore as well, just give more turns for char -X, so yeah. Um, that's the thing, so. Then we have Keldia, which I'm not so sure how offensive it will be. It does have access to Waterium Z, so maybe this thing is like a uh, Calm Mind variant with the uh, Hydro Pump, Z Hydro Pump, or Z Scald, or whatever. I'm not so sure, but... Definitely could be an option to nuke something like, let's say, my Zapdos, or... I'm not so sure, but... Because I think... Uh, the thing is, my Latias walls Keldeo, so he needs something like, let's say, Icy Wind to even attempt to break through Latias, so yeah. So, that's all about Keldeo, I'll say. Then we have Ditto, which... Man, I, I think, aside Charizard, I think this thing has the, se the best chance, second best chance to win for him. Because... The fact that he can just copy my Magirna and just prevent any form of setup and counter sweep me is just scary. But you have to accept it, of course. So he has access to Imposter, and I think the only thing he could change is the IVs on Ditto, and that's about it. And and how much bulk he wants, like. But most of the time, you're gonna see this thing with this fight two HP and whatnot. So transform, pretty basic. Transform Imposter, copy my bet. Probably my Pokemon's best stats. I'm not actually sure now that I'm not, now that I think about it. I'm not so sure whether he runs like Choice Scarf. I think he could run something let's like, say the let's say uh, Ayapa Barrier or whatever, like something that's just or because I feel like having Ditto with Choice Scarf is very limiting. But either way, it's a good revenge killer and can just copy my stats of a certain mod like say Magirna or Latias and just sweep and win. So yeah. Um, I just gotta be very careful of that, so. Otherwise, like, especially if if he's Choice Scarf, I actually would prefer him to be Choice Scarf, because if he's not, if he's, if, if he's not Choice Scarf, then that's a problem. Because, well, then again, he only has, like, I think, five power points to use, so yeah. He can't technically sweep me, but he could, so yeah. Then we have Shuckle, which is really annoying, because he has access to Stealth Rocks, um... Uh, but not just sticky webs, and also another move called Encore, which is another thing that could just set up, help him set up with Char X. Like almost, as you can see, like his entire team is dedicated to setting up with Char X. And I don't know what else he could bring. He could also be some weird ass uh, power trick variant in Trick Room. Almost, oh my God, Shuckle is now a Trick Room sweeper. <laughs> I don't know, but. Chances are likely I, you might, oh, we might see this set, just because Shuckle is just defensively bonkers and whatnot. Maybe with like Ayapa Berry suddenly, similar to how like Ruckus ran, well Milo and Ruckus ran, as well as like Marlax. I don't know, who knows. Then we have this arena, which I think definitely makes an appearance this game, on the merit that it just gives them rapid spin support. And the fact that it is a great uh, Pokemon with access to Aroma of Therapy. So, however, he does have four Moose Lots to draw up here because he would want to have Protect, you want to have a Park, like a Grass Coverage, you want to have Denethys, you want to have some stuff like that. And he also has Oxus and some other support moves like Reflect, Toxic, Speed Bomb, Player Up, Knock Off, High Jump Kick, Endeavor. So, 
And also, I think he also has a, acts as a punishment as well. Yeah, so it's like, it's a very interesting Pokemon. However, it does have a lot of form of Sluss Syndrome, but aside this Grass Stab and the uh, Rapid Spin option, I'm not so sure about the other options, the other two he was going to have. So I definitely think he brings this arena just for the Rapid Spin support for Char X. So again, beating myself, but let's see why. Then we have Bronzong, which I think he brings just because it's a good check to my Magirna, my Mega Latias. Probably his best rocker. And can actually deal with most of my team with Earthquake, Gyro Ball, maybe Toxic. I think he, I think he's brought like stuff like Life Orb, even like Heat Proof at one time, so it could be interesting. So. Especially if he, I bring like a, um, Entei, but I'm not so sure how effective Bronzong will be, but it's definitely going to be a huge wall. Versus my Latias and Magirna because I don't really have much for this for Bronzong. Aside to say Entei and some coverage and Amok. So. Then we have two other Pokemon. I'll cover them together because I feel like I don't think he bring he has to bring one of them, so. First he has Jolteon. Which I honestly don't see him bringing at all, just because it doesn't really do much this game. I have too many specially defensive Pokemon that I could just take it on, and if I get a Toxic on this guy, then it's pretty much over for Jolteon in the first place, so yeah. I don't really see Jolteon doing anything this game. I really don't. If he brings it. He does have Electric and Z, and access to, I think, Big Tears. To, like, lower my, like, to prevent a, a Calm Mind, like, some Calm Minds and whatnot. Or my spread death drops for like let's say uh Latias if he wants to do that. But that's already two moves already, so two turns he's going for it, so yeah. He could baton pass like a Jody to like say another Pokemon, but I think at this point it's pretty obvious why a certain Pokemon could sweep me, but it's whatever, so <laughs> like I said, I don't see Jolteon being able to break the team I have. But he could have Electrium Z or Charge Beam or whatever. He could just boost that up, but I'm just trying to think of ways in which he breaks through this team, really, because I just don't see it. I do see a Ambipom more likely, so. With access to Tail Slap, I think Ignition boosts the Tail Slap. It can be very scary to deal with Ambipom now, especially if it's Life Orb. So, and it also has access to Fake Out. That's access to knockoff, which means I can't even switch it in with Muck, otherwise I lose my berry. And it has access to U-turn, so we get momentum, so yeah. Honestly, I see like Ambipom more likely than uh than uh Char than than Jolteon, just because I could just smack Latias on the on the physical side. Yeah, Latias could take it, but he can't take too much. Like tail technician boosted like tail slaps. Eventually it's gonna fall. So, and if he gets lucky, then yeah, it'll definitely drop to it, so yeah. So overall, I do think that if I had to make a prediction on what his team's going to be, it'll probably be Char X, Ninetales, uh, Keldeo, uh, just because, like, to have something for Entei. Because I feel like his team is very weak to Entei. Um, and without it, it's just like, and, and also to Mudsdale, which will, which is what we'll be bringing, but... Uh, ditto, just to prevent Magirna, this arena for rocks, and maybe the Bronzong for like shutting down these two, like Magirna and Latias. So, all right, so let's get it down to the team builder. So, um, here we have like uh, Latias with uh, Wish Roost, Dragon Pulse, and Ice Shock. Now, I didn't go for Calm Mind because I felt that a little Nine Tails was just gonna just one go for Encore and two just keep attacking me down with Blizzards. I didn't want to risk that, and I felt it was reasonable just to go with Wish before this time, for this uh, final battle. It do Yeah, it does weaken Latias' offensive capabilities, but from a support perspective, it is phenomenal. Since I could just heal up, let's say, uh, my Magirna, my Entei, Zapdos, or even my Mudsdale. Some reasonable okay HP. So, like... And that way I don't have to run something like Licky Licky for this game. I didn't think about bringing Dragon Tail Dicky Dicky, but I felt that 
It just didn't do much this game, especially if it's last mod, uh, Licky Licky, so yeah. Or not last mod, or last mod chart X. So yeah. But anyways, uh, I went with Side Shock just to smack, uh, be able to smack the, uh, the Keldeo if it's a Combine variant. And I went with Draco, uh, I forgo Draco Meteor for Dragon Pulse just for consistency. I didn't want to miss Draco Meteor at all. <laughs> Or get stalled out by them, so yeah. Oh man, that's pretty much uh, something that I have to keep in mind, so yeah. Um, the only thing I will say is that, like, Latias really doesn't really do, do much in terms of an offensive perspective, but once everything gets weakened down, it can just clean his team, so. And especially if I remove the Char X, or weaken Char X enough to where Dragon Pulse kills it off, so yeah. It doesn't Oko, but it does like I think about around 80 ish damage in, especially if it's like a somewhat bulkier set. And if it if I do get up rocks, then I should be able to pick it off. The question is, ha can I be able to get save Ladias for the end game? So that's the thing. So I do hope that the wish support helps out us out more often than not. So yeah, here we have a low and muck, which has very strange coverage, which. I'll admit, like, Alone Muck is definitely one of the more, I don't know, like, the more interesting members of the squad. Because, uh, I, I forgo Knock Off and Poison Jab, two very uh, common stab moves for Crunch and Brick Break. Now, the reason why I did this was because I felt that Knock Off wouldn't, wasn't able to, wasn't good stab for Char X. And the fact that I needed to break the Aurora Veil, the Aurora Veil with something, and I didn't have Defog on Zapdos this week, so I decided maybe I'll just run Brick Break on Muck. That way, I'm still doing damage to Light Nail Deals. And with Crunch, I have a good chance to get Defense Drop against Char X, which is very helpful in this situation, so yeah. I do have Curse this week, because I felt that if I could run Curse, then uh, I could potentially 1v1 the Char X if I get a running start. Let's say like I get a couple first boost and I could just go for crunches and yeah who shot it um that way and even if he has veil up uh, I can still go for break 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 the veil and go for crunches from there like if he's a witch char x then we're in trouble so yeah <laughs> but I think we're already in trouble with char x anyways so yeah then we have a varium z magirna which this set is very weird I'll admit this set's very weird because I have no special attack investment at all but I am relying on the fact that I get boost from Soul Heart in the first place, so yeah. Um, I am um, I am timid nature this week with some HP investment just because one, I felt that I needed to take hits. Two, is that I needed to ensure that I outsped a Charizard that was like paralyzed and had a Jack Dance boost because I realized, um, I think like the very last minute that Char X wasn't able to that Maguna wasn't able to outspeed a Paralyzed plus one Char X, and that was a problem, so I decided, you know what, I might as well just boost the speed a little bit more, or almost to, like, near max. It's just enough that I outspeed a, a, Char a Jolly Char X that's Paralyzed, and it has a Dragon Dance boost by one point, so that way uh, I'm able to knock it out with a Zebra Cannon, so yeah. And the coverage is, is pretty much reasonable. Shadow Ball for Bronzong and Flash Cannon for the Alone Nine Tails, so yeah. I do have Flare Cannon just to uh, weaken myself in case Ditto just comes in and copies my stats. So if it if Ditto tries to copy me, it's going to be a minus one. So he can't do much versus a minus one. Put a minus one Magirna as well. So I also thought about running Combine, but if he was also another. A not, if he was. if a non-scarf variant with Ditto, he could sweep me. So yeah, that's why I ran Shadow Ball. So that way he doesn't have access to Calm Mind. So yeah, and Shadow Ball can always uh, drop special defense drop. So yeah, <laughs> and with Shift Gear, I outspeed Keldeo, and uh, I believe I outspeed even Jolteon. So yeah. So then we have uh, No Legion Tiente, in which um. I believe this Entei was made specifically for two reasons. One, to have Reflect, like Clay Reflect, 
and two to have a um I'd say like a way to beat uh to revenge kill Char X with uh, either extreme speed or stone edge. Um, I do have sacred fire because I this team is very very weak to sacred fire or fire staff in general. So yeah, the only thing I don't like is that the potential of this with sacred fire and with stone edge, but with stone edge I could crit through a veil and that could be really good. So yeah, <laughs> and with e speed I decided yeah I might as well hit something. Say the uh. I might as well just have priority in case Char X gets very low enough to where we could just pick it off. Just keep in mind that he's gonna have hail, and there's gonna be rocks around, and there's gonna be like with, with hail with rocks with potential chip damage, Char and with flare blitz recoil potentially he opts for that, and I think he has to opt for flare blitz for one reason, and I'll get to that. But with all that, like, like. HP going for himself, like, like he needs to run it, so, yeah, he needs to run, like, I have to run, like, extreme speed just to pick off Char X, so I think that's pretty much enough said there, so. Here we have, uh, Static, Zapdos with Rocky Helmet, Roll Switch, Heat Wave, Thunder Wave, and Roost. Now, I went with, I was originally going to drop this for Empoleon, but then I realized how important Zapdos was in terms of walling certain Pokemon, let's say, like, Serena, like, to a degree, Keldeo. Well, not Keldeo, like maybe forcing out Keldeo. Uh, the uh, Ditto in particular. Ambipalm. And uh, Chuckle. But yeah. And if you notice, aside Jolteon, every one of his Pokemon is weak to Thunder Wave. So that's why I ran Thunder Wave this week, because I felt that if I'm able to paralyze certain Pokemon in this game, I might as well. Because and have a good twenty five percent chance to for them to be immobilized, it gives me a free turn. So uh, I ran that over Toxic because I felt that with Thunder Wave I could pretty much halt a Char X sweep, <laughs> like for one turn basically. <laughs> and in that one turn, I need to get that's maybe my chance to kill it. So yeah, but it's also good just enough. It'll buy me time to just to prevent Char X from sweeping me, but yeah. But I do like the fact that we have both switch because it gives us a pivot option, so as well as Heat Wave just to hit certain Pokemon like Bronzong, Ninetales for good chip damage. And Rocky Hammer of it is really nice as if he most of his team is physical based anyway, so yeah. So I think that's Zapdos. And lastly we have Stormbreaker, which or Cleffy, which is probably gonna be our main win con this game because I need this thing to take a hit from Char X, otherwise it just sweeps me. Like, I'm running max defense uh, on Mudsdale, with Rocks, Earthquake, Rock Tomb, and Rest. Now, I do have Earthquake because, uh, or max, max, because, uh, with Earthquake, because I need to kill Char X. Flare Blitz, I think Adam and Flare Blitz has a chance to kill me if he has plus one and he also has, uh, and he, and he also gets a crit, so if he gets a crit on against Mudsdale, then we're kind of screwed. But otherwise, uh, if we're able to live the hit, we're able to Oko it back with Earthquake. Now, should Char X be any other variant, like let's say Flare Blitz, Wisp, Dragon, Dragon uh, Dance, and Roost, then it'll be a lot more difficult, but I think Latias can handle it to a degree, so yeah. But I do have Earthquake, Rock t also Rock Tomb, just to like slow down some mods as well, such as Keldeo, um, the Cicerina, the Jolteon, the Ambipom, etc. And I do like the fact that Stamina gets raised, raises defense every time it gets hit by something, so yeah. So, and with the Apollo Berry, I could get back to full, not full health, but like 75, maybe. Not like up to 75, but like, maybe as like, as... As min as, um, I guess that's the minimum, or whatever, so, or the max amount of XP I get, but whatever, so, just know that this horse has to win, otherwise we are screwed, so that is our team, so, I've probably talked about this for like 25 minutes, 
So we'll probably head to the bat on the bed still. So. I'll see ya. Alright, so we are in the battle, so... As you can see, um, there are some threats that I thought he would bring. There's like... But there's like one particular Pokemon he didn't bring, and that was the uh, Dolphin Ninetales. And... I'm pretty much very ecstatic as him not bringing it, because it's just... I think if he had any chance to set a Veil with Char X, then it probably would have been a much more difficult game. For me at hand, that's well, but he does have the Anvi Palm, so I'm like very likely this thing may have Tail Slap or some like thing like or Skill Slap or Skill Link Tail Slap or something like that. He does bring pretty much most of the other mods I expected, like the Ditto, so I can't really set up a Magirna, the Keldeo, the Bronzong, probably likely for a Rock variant given the nature of this team. And the Serena, so probably for spin support, so yeah. It really makes sense if you think about it. Based on his team comp, so yeah. So based off this uh based off this uh uh initial um team matchup, I realized okay, there's only like two really good leads I had here. Like I thought about either leading Zapdos and Terra Latias. I felt that Latias wasn't that good of a lead because of Potential Bronzong and the immediate and the immediate Ditto as well. So um, I felt that Zapdos had a better time because it pretty much paralyzed. And by the way, the one other huge factor was no Jolteon, meaning I could just paralyze something immediately turn one. So yeah, with Thunder Wave. So and I could also pivot out with Volt Switch. So as you could tell, I could I pretty much played with Zapdos. So. He goes for Ambipom, and I go for my Zapdos, and right now, um, I'm pretty much thinking, okay, what does this thing guy want to do? Does he want to go for the uh, Fake Out, go in, then go for U-Turn, because then he's going to get a lot of chip damage. Because with the Zapdos, I do have Rocky Helmet, I do have Static, so um, I don't necessarily have to go for my uh, Thunder Wave here. I can just go Volt Switch and just respond to whatever he switches into, so yeah. Here he goes into Fake Out, and he gets a crit, and I'm like, well, that's some justice after the last, after the semifinals. So, um, so, he gets a crit. Uh, it, I'm able to do a lot of damage with Life Orb and with the Rocky Helmet, so yeah. And I'm already thinking, oh man, I'm gonna lose my Zapdos turn one. And he goes for Return here, and I'm like, whoa, he doesn't have the skill link thing. And I go for Roost, trying to save Zapdos. Sort of like, I'm expecting this thing to die, basically, so. Um, here, I decided to go for another Roost, however, he just immediately just goes into Char X. And already, this is pretty much a really scary turn, because I just gave Char X a, a free turn 1. So, well, not turn 1, but like, uh, turn 3 is like, potential setup, so. I could have gone for like Thunder Wave or Roost. I thought I thought about going for Thunder Wave either, but I felt that I needed to recover up Zapdos because it does look good versus the rest of his team once Char X is out of the way. So yeah, um, and I do have Volt Switch. So now with Char X on the on the field, I had like two options or three. One was basically to uh, or one or two of them, which is basically the same. Um, switch out. Either one with Bolt Switch or with the uh, Heart Switch into uh, Mudsdale. Or I just go for the Thunder Wave and I just paralyze this Char X. And I figured, okay, um, Char X will be far more of a threat if he sets up right now. So, and I felt that getting a, a little bit of chip damage would be nice on Char X. Especially if he's trying to psych me out and just goes for a hard double as well. Then I, I might as well just respond with Bolt Switch. So. Um, Thunder Wave, I, it'd be nice to have Pichard X paralyzed, but he, I could also get him paralyzed if he just attacks me right now, so yeah, with static, and if it's a contact move, so yeah. So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go for a slow pivot, and uh, he goes for Dragon Dance, of course, and I go for Bolt Switch, get some good 18% chip damage, and I go for Cuffy, and, and this is pretty much the turn. 
that I'm pretty much debating, is he going to risk Charrex right now? Because at this point, I could just dread him out. I pretty much got Mudsdale in for free without taking any damage. And that was also another key factor is why I decided to have a... Uh, to go for both switch so that way I get chip damage so that way if he has flare blitz he's gonna get me more more chip damage and I can just knock him out easily. However I decide here that I'm not playing around with this Char X. I could have set up rocks but I can't really I can't play around with this at all. It's a threat. So he could switch out if he wants to to bronze on and that's easy rocks for him from there. Or toxic. But I've realized yeah, I have to stay in here. He goes for Flare Blitz, and I live the hit very easily. And I go for Earthquake, and I knock out a huge threat early, as early as turn 5. So now, with Charge Heart, one of the biggest threats gone, this game looks very much open for the rest of my team. Because, except now, it's just basically just. How we're gonna deal with this Keldeo, this Ditto, and the Bronzong? So, um, pretty much at this point, um, Cephy has pretty much done its job, but it still has some use in like walling some Pokemon and getting rocks up in general. But for now, I decide, you know what? I'm not letting Cephy die right now. I could, this is a good time to Mega Evolve. Here he goes for Icy Wind, just predicting my Latias switch in. So yeah, here he goes to Bronzong. And here I decide, you know what, I might as well just go for Roost here. Just get myself healthy in case he tries to set up. Or like let's say Combine or something. I can tell that he's not depth he's not uh combine or uh, not combine but like sex, so that's really helpful information as well. So here I go back to Mudsdale. And unfortunately he does miss Toxic there, but it's whatever because Mudsdale wasn't really gonna do much this game. Um here I'd go back into Alolan Muck, just to see what he wants to do, and I just wanted to see... Alright, so we're back, so... Got interrupted there, so I do apologize, so... We're back on, uh, I believe... Oh, uh, I think we were, like, a little bit earlier. So, I think we were just here, so we make a double into the... Um, into the... Um, our Muck, just to block a Toxic. For Mudsdale. Like I said, um... I didn't really need Mudsdale, but I wanted to see what else this Maranthon can do, so... I want, at this point, I kind of want to get chip damage from this Bronzong, whatever I can, so... Here I decide to, um... Uh, I believe I decided to go for Crunch here, get some chip. He goes to Ditto just to take the hit. I think he went to Ditto expecting my Muck to have knockoff. And some kind of setup option, but at least... I think at this point he knows my moveset, and he realizes, oh shit. This guy could just set up on this ditto on me and he probably is recycled so yeah at this point i think he switches out and goes to keldeo and i go for a curse um i am able to take some hits from keldeo but i don't want to risk uh the uh uh risk getting burnt here so um i do don't i don't want to have keldeo be like able to break this team with just uh Mines as he is going for this right now, and that's probably his best play. So, we do have the Psy Shock in deck just to be able to chip down Keldeo. He is able, to, we are able to weaken it down to like to almost six percent. So, we are, we are able to take the Icy win fight the combine boost. So, yeah, um, at this point, like Keldeo is pretty much within range of extreme speed, and it's no longer really a threat to my team. So Let's say Sapdos or Kente, even Muck can deal with this, so yeah. Um, I am worried about like this uh, Keldeo, so I go for a Dragon Pulse. Um, just to try to pick off, pick it off, so... Yeah. In case, uh... I went for a uh, Dragon Pulse in case he, the Ditto swapped in, so yeah. And Bronzong gets swapped in here, so yeah. Here I decided to go into Muck. Because I didn't want to get Toxic, but he goes for Gyro Ball, so I, at least we're now knowing his full moveset. He has Toxic, Gyro Ball, and something else, so yeah. He goes for Earthquake, and my Berry activates, my Agua Berry activates, so yeah. And we're back in, near full, so. Goes back to Ambipom, and I'm able to kill that thing in just one hit, so. Now he goes into the Keldeo, and he goes for Secret Sword, 
I do risk the fact the the potential scalper, but I figured at this point, you know what, Muck can just kind of do its thing. Like Keldeo's not boosted. Um, like I can, I can take any Z move I want to, except maybe like the Hydro Pump. But I think if it's if it crits me, so yeah, I did risk that. So, um, here I go. He goes for play rough. He gets an attack drop. However, I get my berry back and I recycle back. So yeah, I switch out because I don't want him to knock me off again. So, but he gets paralysis static, rocky helmet with Zapdos, and at this point, the game's looking very grim for him, because Ditto can't really do much. Um, at this point, I am pretty much going to click Heatwave this entire game, and it's pretty much game over for this for this battle, because there's not really much you can do, like, as I'm just going to keep clicking Heatwave, and uh, Bronzong just comes in, I just keep click Heatwave again, he goes for Toxic, so yeah. Um, so at this point, the game's over, unless, like, he goes into Zapdos and just starts repeatedly going for Roost. And I'm like, okay, I know what you're doing here. Um, he should... I go for Volt Switch, just because I'm just gonna Volt turn out here and go into Entei. Because at this point, Entei can just pick everything off, so yeah. Here he switches into, uh, a Bronzong again as a sack. And he knows that Entei can just win this game at this point. Yeah. He's at this point without any switch in, he's gonna copy my Entei. And I know now that um the fact that this thing is scarfed locked into uh whatever move, I felt that it's pretty much game over at this point since uh I have a Sapdos, I have a Mudsdale, Wood Rest potential, and I have a Latias right there, so so at this point, Latias and Mudsdale and win this game, unless he if he locks himself into like Sacred Fire, he could also go with the Stone Edge, but then like Magirna also wins. So yeah. And speaking of Magirna, I decide you know what, yeah I'm gonna risk Magirna because I want to see what move he locks himself into and whether he is uh choice locked or choice scarf, just to confirm. So at this point. I end the game in style, and I go to go for Shadow Ball just to weaken it down. And he misses the Stone Edge, but at this point, you pretty much know what's gonna happen. I go for Toggle Tackle, D Flare Cannon, and that's gonna be the game. So pretty much a short turn, dirty turn game. And in all seriousness, it was a very, it was a very, I, I know it's like, it was kind of a blowout, but. You gotta understand that uh, Charax was very threatening, whole game, like, especially if, like from a team building perspective. Because I realized, oh my god, if he brought like, like Charax in Veil, then yeah, it would have been very very scary to deal with in the first place. And I think this game really came down to three factors: one, how well I prep versus Charizard; two, how well do I res do I pre like. I respond to the rest of his threats. And three, how much resources I'm gonna have for the late game once I dealt with Charizard to way be able to win this game. And lo and behold, I had all my resources or all my Pokemon available for me. So it was pretty much like um I know it's it's kind of an anticlimactic win. Because like, yes, I did 6 0 the person, or I did 6 0 like Doggo. But I felt like um, his team was just as threatening with Char X because if he had set up with Char X and was able to get some kills or two, like two or three kills, then like those three Pokemon I have, it could be any Pokemon really. The rest of his five Pokemon could just, the rest of his five Pokemon could just like potentially beat the, the rest of my own like team, really. All Char X needed to do was just punch holes or just sweep me in general. So yeah. Um, but I will say that, like, him bringing, not bringing a reveal was a huge, like, like, not bringing horseshit reveal was a huge advantage in my favor because it just gave me the time and gave me, like, the, uh, resources to, like, be able to beat down Char-X since 
Char a bulky Charax in Veil would be almost difficult to deal with, so yeah. And it would almost result in me just running Thunder Wave and just trying to kill that thing off before it sets up too much and whether Mudsdale can handle it, so yeah. Um, so... That is going to be good games to uh, Doggo as we now are the official, I guess, Amino Jack Tour champions for the Grand Festival for this year. And that's really, that's really fun. That was a fun tournament throughout. Yeah, I know, like throughout this, uh, uh, throughout this uh, battles, like I know Magirna was probably like the face of my team. And it was definitely like the main driving factor to like me getting into finals. I mean, you could just look at the or just look at the third round and the uh and the uh my semifinals, like you can see what where you mean right there, so and I will admit that I did I was lucky in getting there, so yeah. But that's what it is, so um for this game I feel like there wasn't that much hacks involved. But I think as soon as he lost Char X I think that just the game just went downhill from him because I had enough resources to beat the rest of his team. Like Keldia was kind of easy to beat once you got got it low, which Latias and then like like Ambipom was already low to where Entei could just pick it off. This arena is also Entei food. Ditto was probably the only other threat that that could be a problem if I let Magirna set up. But the reason why I had that EV spread was because. I wanted to ensure that he didn't have a good attack, special attack, on his own Ditto Magirna, and that it can't just start sweeping me, in general. Like, I wasn't going to set up to win with Magirna. It was an option, though. It was the it was an option available to me, but I didn't want to use it until I got rid of Ditto, somehow, or if he didn't break it at all, so yeah. So, I think that's going to be, like, it for the video, so... Um, my final thoughts for this, uh, league are basically, like, I felt like this, overall, this team was very strong that we drafted. With Latias, Mega Latias, Magirna, Zapdos, and a very defensive core between, like, Muck, um, Chestnut, and Polion. I know Licky Licky didn't do much. I did think Mustel was able to handle this team, and I think it was probably the MVP for this game, <laughs> just for killing Chirax. Um... But overall, like, I, I definitely say, like, Magirna is definitely, definitely the B word, broken. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just, like, rambling at this point, so yeah, so. I guess I'll end the video here, so. Good games to Zephyr, Doggo, as, uh, hopefully, like, in the next, like, draft tournament or whatever, uh, of, like, like draft league I made in Amino. If I ever face him or or Batson or Yami or whoever, I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll be able to get a rematch if I'm able to beat them again. So or or whatever. So I am looking for like I am thinking about joining some leagues in uh uh Amino like in Pokemon Amino or other areas in this community. So hopefully I'm able to. Hopefully we'll see what happens, so, because, um, um, well, the other stuff that's going on right now, so. But I do admit, like, winning a sixth championship is really fun. So, yeah. Um, so I guess I already, I think I already talked too, way too much. I think I focus more too much on the team builder and on the battle itself, so, yeah. Um, but anyways, I guess I would just cut it here, so. Um, that'll be all, so. Thank you for watching this uh, series, and uh, I'll see you guys next time, so peace.